here's what's going on. The OP and Anthony Show goes live from Chicago in just three minutes. This is after OP and Anthony live. Before OP and Anthony, live from Chicago. Here's your host, Sam Roberts. Let me hear you, Chicago! Well, this is the pre-show, live at 115, 115 Bourbon Street. That's not the address. That's the name of the location here in Chicago, Illinois. How is Chicago doing? Yeah! It's a very awkward intro because we couldn't hear the actual intro that played that you at home. There was a radio intro that played that nobody could. So they were just cheering, and I had to tell them all to shut up for a second. But now you're allowed to cheer as much as you want. Yeah! I hope you're all prepared for the greatest live show probably Chicago has ever seen. Uh, we have a lot planned for today, and we have a lot of people here. First of all, we're going to be doing Chip Off the Old Block. How many people are excited about Chip Off the Old Block? We got some booze. Chip, some guys. And the drinking has commenced here. Oh, yes. At the pre show for the Open Anthony Show live in Chicago. There's a man in the front row who's bragging about his tooth. Uh, not yet, not yet, <laughs> not yet. He's a, not yet, sir. You'll be all right. We do also have security here. Security is Yay! here. Thank God for all of us. Yes, but uh, chip off the old block is, of course, the contest where you, the audience, get to do chip impressions. Does anybody have a chip look? Did people come with looks for chip? Yeah. Chip outfits. That's your look. You have one. There are a couple chip outfits here. How many of you? are here to compete in the worst breath in Chicago contest. Just the one guy. No, nobody, we're giving away $500 to the worst breath in Chicago. Nobody has faith in their breath. You do. And you, no, 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 no on the stage, mister. You have bad breath. A lot of people have bad breath, and we have a special judge for that, but we'll get to him in just a minute. Uh, how about this? $1,000 for the oddest thing you own. Who's got very odd things? And more importantly, who's excited about seeing odd things? Yes! We all are! Now, you may or may not know, but I was able... What, what is that coming from? I blame Danny for that. That was probably your mic. Uh, I've been in Chicago for over 24 hours. Uh, there was some trial and tribulation, but I made it here on Thursday! That's right. Not everybody made it here on Thursday though. So there is some question as to how many members of the Opie and Anthony show are actually here in Chicago. Uh, why don't we introduce some of them first? Well, he's on stage right now. Danny, why don't you say hello? This is Danny hello, Ross. Chicago. Chicago. How are you doing? You all know Danny. He does the how much bits. He does all this stuff. All that stuff. Danny, uh, you were in Chicago last night as well. I was. Okay. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. I guess that mic wasn't on before. <laughs> How are you liking? Chicago, how, you doing? how are you liking Chicago? So I far? love Chicago. Yeah, and and I'll say, I'm not, and I don't say that just because we're here because we went to Cleveland and that place is god awful. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Chicago's awesome That's right. so far. That's right. This guy here says fuck Cleveland. Are we saying fuck Cleveland? That's right. That's right. We're not in Cleveland, so fuck them. Fuck them. Now, uh, Dan. By the way, E Rock uh, earlier this week got some guff on the air because he badly wanted to see the Married with Children fountain that's here in Chicago. Let me ask you this. Danny, you got here last night. You haven't had a lot of time. No, not uh, a lot. Have you gotten to do anything here in Chicago? I got to have some dinner last night. Oh, great, nice. great, great. Uh, good food in Chicago? Is there yeah. good food? Yeah. yeah. I, I hear some, uh, that you guys make pizzas. I had some free hotel breakfast. In the you morning. had free hotel breakfast. Only in Chicago is your <laughs> breakfast free. And then uh, directly following, I went to the Married with Children Fountain. Oh, you went to the Married with Children Fountain. <laughs> yes, of course. Of course I did. I did the Bundy, the Bundy pose. You know? Yeah, there he is, the Bundy pose. You have to. Um, well, Danny's not the only person here because uh, a young man who some of you may know as Travis, but most of you know as Dr. Gay is here. Can we be, sing a song for him? They call him Dr. Gay. That's fine. You, you, you don't have, you don't, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Dr. Gay. Dr. Gay. There he is. Dr. Gay. Dr. Gay. I'm really glad this bit's sticking around. Now, as if we didn't need enough evidence, well, you didn't realize when we were talking, because Travis also got here yesterday. He was here since Thursday. 
Uh, what we didn't realize until we got here to the venue today was that the reason Danny and Travis could both travel on Thursday is because they're staying in the same hotel room and dressing each other. Very nice plaid shirt, short sleeve. And uh, hang on a yeah. second. And the only reason that you're not wearing yours is because you saw that we were both ended up dressing the same. Yeah, we were backstage. You have I did. Well. I did bring a plaid shirt because I didn't know if I would want to wear it. I saw Danny and no, Travis. You know that's, why, that's why Sammy Sam's dressed like a schlub today. And I made the decision I did not want to wear it. Thank you very much. Do I look handsome or what? Mixed reaction on that. Yeah, one. Mixed reaction. Well, you know, Danny and Travis are not the only people here because you all, the live crowd, got to hear it. I really wish the radio audience had heard it. They did not hear what you heard about seven minutes ago. And that was a great uh, a, a crowd booster because what you want to do is get the live crowd amped up and let them know that the live programming that they're here to see is about to start. And they got a hell of an intro from a guy who got here only a few hours ago. He just got here this morning, but he made it here. And that man who did the uh, uh, startlingly good intro is Roland! Roland is here! Hey! Roland! Roland, you did a fabulous job introing everybody. Thanks. Um, how are you doing? How are you, don't, don't worry about him. Worry about me. How are you doing? A lot of distractions here. What Roland doesn't realize is that uh, even though there are a lot of wonderful Chicagoans here in the crowd today, uh, I'm the one you want to focus on, just me. Yeah, I know. So uh, how, are you, how did you like it being on stage all by yourself to introduce this great broadcast? I did not like it. You didn't? His, no, did, you guys I notice, it. did you guys notice his voice cracking a couple times? Yeah. It, 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 when I see all the people, it cracks. Yeah, well, why don't you... Uh, just do a big plug, let everybody know where they are, they're here, what, what show is coming up, because... Roland, I'm just telling you now, the hosts are about less than 10 minutes away. They're on their way. But don't pretend you... No, 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 no. That wasn't the announcement. That was me telling Roland. What I need Roland to do with that information is you, let the crowd know, I'll get off your stage, Roland, let the crowd know what's coming. Let them know, Roland. Roland, you're losing their focus, Roland. They're not focused on you, Roland. You gotta make sure that they're focused on you. Command their attention. This is your crowd. Are you Roland's crowd? Yeah! All right, Roland, you got him now. Let him know. Let him know, Roland. Oh, oh, and A. Uh, all right, they're trying to catch. Oh, and A is uh, taking this out. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah! No, no, say it again. They don't even know what you said. You mumbled. Oh. Uh, I went there about ten minutes out. Let's hear it for Roland. Let's hear for Roland. Roland also. I wanted to say this. We're, Roland, don't leave just yet. We're at 115 Bourbon Street. It's a, a bar and restaurant here. Yes. They treated us very well. We got to sample some of their food. I found out earlier they make wonderful chicken tenders. Yes. And Roland found out that the entire right side of the menu is also wonderful. It's very delicious. Congratulations. Uh, I just had a sampling of it. Roland decided, uh, after he had a nice free hotel breakfast, he decided to come here before a live broadcast and have uh, Chicago favorites jambalaya, chili, and buffalo wings for lunch. It's a good lunch. It was delicious. It was delicious. It was delicious. Well, thank you very much, Roland. Some of the people in the crowd are asking to see Roland's shit. Miss, do you also want to see Roland's shit? Shit. Sure. His excrement. Why not? Hey, they want to see your shit rolling, so later on in the broadcast, show. later on in the broadcast, if you do defecate, make sure you save it and you share it with these great people. Thank you very much, Roland, everybody. Roland. Now, there was a, a lot of questions. Oh, also, I don't want him. He might get mad if I don't introduce him. He uh, was a big part of the show this week. Everybody give a hand for Gary. Gary's here. Oh, come on. No, you're kidding me. You're booing. Wait, you're kidding me. Why would you boo him? Didn't you notice? Excuse me. Didn't you notice? He's wearing a Blackhawk shirt. Why would you boo him? It's Gary, everybody. Get oh, that's incredible. Oh, you guys are unbelievable. Well, we haven't introduced everybody yet. Because a lot of, if you remember, I don't know, how many of you listened to yesterday's show? You were listening yesterday. You listen every morning, right? That's what I like to hear. Now, uh, there was some question about flights. 
uh, Iraq and Troy Kwan is what was questionable because uh, they were told to go to the airport bright and early. And if you remember, Iraq said, well, he said he wasn't going to go to the airport early, but you knew he was going to go because he's not, he's not a badass like he pretends to be. But Troy Kwan, on the other hand, said, I'll get there when I get there. And so there's been a lot of questions as to who would make it to Chicago because the weather in New York hasn't been great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Troy Kwan is in here. Is not here. What are you cheering for? He's gone. He's not here. He didn't make it. No, he didn't make it at all. He didn't get on his plane. Not whatsoever. He's back in New York looking for a party. Troy Kwan is not here. I'd like to apologize to all the ladies that showed up, showed up for Troy Kwan. I heard he was getting too old for this shit. Yeah, he said that's the thing. He said traveling is just wearing on him. He's not like he was when he was a young man. But Iraq, the sex bagel nagel. He was supposed to leave around the same time as Troy Kwan. E-Rock is also scheduled to be the guest judge of today's worst, worst breath in Chicago contest. Do you think E-Rock made it? Do you think E-Rock is the type of guy to do what needs to be done for the show? Well, let's find out. Is the sex bagel here? Open that door. Is the sex bagel here? It's the sex bagel! He's got a mic for you. You don't take my mic. This is my show. Man. The mic doesn't What's up, leave Chicago? my hand. What's up, Chicago? He wants to know. I yeah, love how you do it, Sam, day in, day right. out. Right. These 12-hour days are fucking murder. He does. I will tell you this. E Rock got on a morning flight this morning, and you guys, you got to give him credit. He's already been awake for close to nine and a half hours. That's a perfect 12. Oh. Oh, uh, Iraq, you don't take pictures while you're on stage. Why not? Also, uh, you'll notice that Iraq has a little confidence. He's got a strong buzz on. He's, he's drunk a little bit already. Yeah. He's already somewhat drunk. Iraq, you drinking a little bit? Your face is very red. Oh, a few Bloody Marys, a couple Roman Cokes. Let me ask you this. Chicago's feeling pretty fucking good right now. <laughs> show E-Rock. This is confident E-Rock in front of all of you. Wait till the hosts get here. Give it half an hour. You won't hear me talk for the rest of the show. Now, uh, the question that I would really like to know is uh, we always see when people meet E-Rock in person, there's such descriptions of E-Rock on the radio. Uh, we paint such the picture of him. Is he as fat as you all thought he would be? I don't think that last fat. part was necessary. Yeah, still, we'll still talk about it. He's still fat. Well, thank you, Iraq. I'm glad you made it. Uh, is there anything you want to say in reference to Troy Kwan not making it? He takes a lot of shots at you. I don't know if you have an opinion one way or the other. Well, it just goes to show that right. Troy really doesn't give a shit. Oh, come on. Not about the show? Not about anything? Not about the show. Uh, not about work dedication. Not about anything being here. Well, let's say this. How excited are we? Why would don't hit the audience? E Rock is drunk, everybody. Let's give it up for E Rock. E Rock. Thank you, sir. Are you chanting fatty? So what should we tell? Should we tell E Rock to come back here? And what should he do after he comes back here? Come back here and shut up is indeed exactly what E Rock should do. Um, all right. How many people are here with a uh, oddest thing you own? You are. You are, sir. Iraq, we just talked to you. Oh, it's not you. What's your name, sir? Don't tell me what you have. What's your name? My name is Corey. Corey, you look like the type of guy who would have an oddest thing you own. Uh, how long have you had this item? How excited are you to show us? I've had it for about uh, 10 years. I got it from my brother for Christmas, so I'm ready to get rid of it. Are you confident that you will win the $1,000 prize for the oddest thing you own? Are you confident? No! No, he says no! He says no! Well, still, it's only important that you play. And you, sir, uh, you styled your facial hair after my father. What's your name? Come to the stage. Heath. Heath? Like Heath Ledger? I wish you were like Heath Ledger. Now, you have an oddest thing you own. Uh, how long have you had it for? About eight years. Is it something that humiliates you for owning it? 
What was the question? Are you humiliated by the fact that you own it, or is it a prized possession of yours? No, it's a prized possession. It is a prized possession. How confident are you that you will win the $1,000? Uh, there's not many people here with all these things I've been talking around, so... Well, you got maybe? this guy right here who kind of yeah. looks like E-Rock. Right That's it, huh? So what do you we'll think? We'll see. What do you think? you got to have more confidence than that to play this I'm going to win. You are going to win. He's yeah. going to win. Yeah. Who else thinks they're going to win? This guy right here. Uh, you do. Yeah. That'll be easier for you. you got something in a box. Don't open that box. I'm not going to open the, the box. box. We'll find out later. You excited to show this to everybody? Yeah, it's pretty funny. The, the box is the size of a finger. Is it a finger? No. Thank God for that. It's no body parts. You're based on these two guys who are not confident at all. They're probably a body parts, so. You think you're going to win? He's got a bag. He could have like a head in that bag. He could have a head in that bag. Who knows? Yeah, it's, uh, that, that one bothers me because it's insulated. It is. This guy over here, he's got a, a weird handlebar mustache. That means, that means I mean, what, what the fuck would have to be kept cold? I don't know. He brought his oddest thing you own in an insulated bag. Keep in mind, the last time somebody uh, participated in the oddest thing you own, it was in Philadelphia. It was a dead monkey, and he performed oral sex on it. So we'll see what Chicago has to offer. We'll see what Chicago has to offer. Uh, Danny, this lady has something to tell me. What's your name, miss? My name is Jackie. Jackie, first of all, I would like to say this. I can't believe the number of attractive women that showed up to this Chicago. <laughs> There, there have been some very attractive women in this city. It's a, not only in this city, but that turned out for an Opie and Anthony gig. I'm representing New York. You are? You came from New York? Yeah. Why would you move? We're all from New York. Don't put Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, where so don't, don't drop your teeth. Where in New York are you from? Um, um, Centerport. Centerport. And you just drove here, or what, you flew uh, here? A plane, a train, and two buses. Why wouldn't you just wait until we're at the Hard Rock again? <laughs> Chicago anyway. Chicago's great, isn't yeah, it, it is. great? Yeah. You know, some of you guys don't like it as much. I was up on the Willis Tower earlier today. It's terrifying. It's terrifying. Alright, Danny. It's time. Oh, you've got an honest thing you own? You do? Yes. Okay. Uh, is it something that's attached to you, maybe in the chest area? No. Okay, no, just no, asking. No, just no, asking. No, no, um, no. Are you excited about showing this off? Yes, it, I love it, but my husband hates it. He hates it? Yeah. How happy are we that she has a husband? <laughs> All right, well, uh, have you had it for a long time? Is this I've something? Ha I've had it since 2001. And you think that this is enough to get the $1,000? I do. That's fantastic. That, she thinks she's going to win. All right, before we get to you, we'll get to you. Mr. Drinks Early, we'll get to you in a minute. What about this guy? We've got a man over here who's smartly dressed. He's in a polo shirt, but it says Opie and Anthony spread the virus. Where did you get that, that shirt? Got it, on, got it online. I didn't even know they exist. Yeah, they do, a couple years ago. <laughs> well, uh, what do, you, do you have something that oddest? Is the shirt the oddest thing you own? No. What uh, is it? What is it? It's no, some, don't tell me what it is. It's, some, it's something very rare that I got at the Atlanta airport 12 oh years ago. Don't say any more. <laughs> don't say any more. You, but is it odder than what she has, do you think? Yes. Oh, my God. So. She doesn't think so, though. I don't think so. Oh, I can't wait to see how this works out. The tension is mounting, Danny Ross. I can, I can feel it. The tension is mounting. All right. Let's talk to Mr. Needs Attention. How are, how are you doing today, sir? Dude, I am doing fucking spectacular. Joe thing. Walsh is here. Um, can I just say for the record, yes, I mean, the, the guys out there, they can't see this person. So this guy, he's kind of sweaty and long hair, aviator glasses, with a Pabst Blue Ribbon t-shirt, yeah. covered in tattoos. And let me tell you, he sounds exactly like he looks. He, he, and he, he, Dude, my name's Warren Hatfield. I play in the band The Server Handlers of West Virginia. And I came from uh, West Virginia. West Virginia. No shit, huh? West Virginia's in the house. Let me see. Dude, I totally believe you. I don't have to see your license. This is your driver's license. And you're missing teeth, so there's the fucking clincher. It, say, it says, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Fuck, I'm fucking toothless, right? That's yes, correct. that is correct. West Virginia is indeed on his driver's license. There you go, sir. <laughs> now, why do you keep taking out your tooth? Um, well, I was in the... Okay, hey, never mind. It doesn't fuck matter. Fuck you. Uh, hey. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I, I don't was, care. Uh, I was, what are you here to do here today? I'm here. Are you here to play I'm one here, of the games? I'm here to play two games. No, you're going to play one. Well, I... The first one is how drunk can you, can I possibly get before we'll, the show starts? We'll play one game. What I'm game? not what? drunk yet. I'm what? not drunk yet. But oh, obviously not. I want to do the uh, yeah. bad breath and the chip. All right, you're going to do the bad breath one because it's just a waste of time to do the chip one for you. You can't form a sentence as a human being. Were you trying to call me out or something? 
Right, yeah, we'll just do the bad breath one. That, that should work. How is his breath, by the way, sir? What up? How's his breath? Stank. All right, so he should. Maybe he'll do well. Maybe he'll do well. Keep in mind, E-Rock is a bad breath expert. So uh, he is. E-Rock, how did you get to be such a bad breath expert? Uh, I think by default. No. I, no, it wasn't default. It was years of experience. Okay, if you want to go with that. I think it is. Um, and Chips. Who's trying? Not this guy. Anyone else trying to be the next Chip Chipperson? All the way in the back. You're going to have to come to the front because we're not going to, you know. We got a guy over that. here, too. Which guy? We got, a, we got a big boy over here. Okay. Now, you think, don't do the Chip impression because that's for the show. But you think you have what it takes to be the next Chip. Don't do the Chip impression. My teeth are dry. He's already got Edgar down, so I think you can do Chip. It's not bad. What about this guy over here in the white T-shirt? Do you do other impressions besides Chip? I don't, don't do any impressions. So why do you want to be Chip so bad? Because I look like Jim Norton, kind of. So it'd be easier to look for. Well, yeah, but if Jim Norton wanted a new look for Chip, and it was well, Jim right, Norton, but it's he easier to pull off my you. look than try go with like a latex cost. This uh, cosmetic bullshit. There's a difference between something looking effortless and you putting no effort into something. Okay, listen, real quick. Before we move on, they can hear me if I go back there, right? Okay. I'm going to go back here for a second. Are you guys what, are the, what are the people supposed to look at on the are stage? Are you guys ready to do the show? Are you guys... Uh, Opie. Opie's back here, everybody. I'm talking to him. Opie, are you ready to do the show? I'm having a calm my nerves beer right now. Oh! E-Rock's had about 15 oh, of them so far. Drunk. Why are you yelling? You're not in front of the crowd. Because I got headphones, huh? And Anthony. Are you ready for this? This is a big gig. Chicago's out there waiting for you and Opie. You're tweeting. You're not doing. I don't see a lot of show prep. I don't see a lot of printouts. Uh, no bit preparing. I wing it. That's what professionals do, Sam. I got notes. Did you tell uh, the crowd you were scared in the glass box or no? I told them that the Willis Tower was terrifying. Yes, and it was. It was. Listen, it can't be too much. Yeah. It was terrifying for you. Everyone else had a blast. It's very high up. Listen, you can tell that story on your show, okay? Which is only a couple minutes away, so I hope you guys are ready. I wanted to give you your warning. Because in about a minute, I'm going to throw it to music, and then you got to go on, whether you're ready or not. I hate on-air Sam. Sorry, Ant. Sorry, Ant. I love on-air Anthony. I'm back on stage. I'm coming back on stage now. Okay. Listen. Okay, there's one guy chanting prime time. I don't think it's going to catch on. I just don't think it's catching on. We have the worst breath in Chicago. We have Chip off the old block. We have oddest thing you own. Coke Logic is here. And I'll tell you this. Years ago, the great Patrice O'Neill gave Coke Logic the advice that when he's picking up chicks in a bar, just look at them and say, I'm Coke Logic, bitch. This is the one bar where it might work. It might work for Coke Logic if he tries it. The Opie and Anthony show is coming up right now. Get amped, get excited, but don't start cheering until you see them. Goodbye, everybody. Uncensored and live in front of your face. The OP and Anthony Show invade Chicago. Chicago. Live from 115 Bourbon Street, Marionette Park. Hear it next on the OP and Anthony Channel.